Hi there and welcome to my rover instruction video. I have made a couple of rover versions which I call the Tortoise Rover because it has a very strong shield sort of. It will protect two kerbals that will fit inside. Over here we have version 1, it's the bare minimum. It's got a lot of batteries on the side, put some lights on there. Also on the back. There's some SAS in order to rotate and try and save yourself if you decide to try to drive really fast but yeah version 1 didn't really satisfy me so I went on to add some RCS thrusters on version 2 over here so it's got some more plating on the SAS which in hindsight didn't really help it's got some RCS thrusters on the side below as well some linear thrusters Obviously I had to remove some battery power over here in order to place the RCS tank. So it contains maximum of 300 monopropellant. However the RCS didn't really work either. So when version 3 came into production I added some of these little engines on the side. You might not have noticed yet but there is a large fuel tank on the bottom of the rover to give it some weight so it will be able to be used on world on planets with smaller gravity as well it has 360 liquid fuel in it and you can use those little engines to save your rover if you're in a pickle by for example jumping off cliffs etc and finally we went to version 4 put some more lights on the side added some more RCS for some more weight there's a docking port on top as well so if you decide to build yourself a fuel station like the one I have in the back there you can dock a few rovers up there refuel them and then send fuel to the fuel station either way I named this rover the Tortoise because it has a very safe cabin on top of the large fuel tank which is designed as I said earlier to protect two kerbals while driving across any planet you wish there's some uh, landing legs on the side because I tested this on Kerbin and the SAS wasn't able to flip me over back on Kerbin so on planets with higher gravity you can use those lander legs to flip yourself back over should you land on top of your uh, of your rover Yeah, here's me trying to get in the seat right now and after that I'll show you why it's nicknamed a tortoise So yeah, imagine this, you're driving along on the moon surface and then suddenly your car decides to flip like that. Well, thankfully there is SAS on this vehicle, so if anything goes wrong, you can tip yourself back over before it goes wrong. If anything else fails or you're not really paying attention, the rover is designed to be able to take a few hits before actually being fully destroyed and even then your Kerbal will likely survive the impact likely anyway to demonstrate that this rover is fully safe and designed for Kerbal longevity I'm going to drive a little Sigbro over here over the top of a cliff into a large crater again just to show you how safe our product actually is right so we're coming up to the edge of the cliff here oh boy Oh, that's not very promising, is it? That can ruin your day pretty good. Well, nothing really much happened. We lost some SAS. That's so far so good. Oh no, there we go. There we go. Now this is a crash you wouldn't want to see happen to your guys. I think. Well, it stayed pretty intact so far. Oh, more explosions, there we go. Yeah, let's get some more disaster in there. Everything's spinning around really fast right now. And suddenly... More explosions happen. Of course. Still relatively intact. I mean... You could take this and drive for another 
couple hundred kilometers on the moon, no problem. And just to do a little check. Total disaster! And the Kerbal is still inside! So basically your entire rover is vaporized into little bits. And over here is a big shell where the two Kerbals... Well, I only put one in, but... Imagine there's a second guy sitting right behind Sigbro that's also totally safe. Let's check out version 4. Right, so version 4 over here has more lights on the side here as well. It has a lot more RCS than the previous versions, which is version 3 and version 2. Version 3 has some more battery power, but hey, there's still 12 solar panels on top of here. There's 4 thermoelectric generators hidden in here. So hey, who needs batteries, right? This thing's pretty self-sufficient. And I bet you it'll be a lot more safe than the first version was. And just to be nice, I'm going to test that claim as well. We'll be driving to the same cliff, jumping from roughly the same area into a large pit, and we'll see how these engines fare. Okay, we're so we're driving up to the cliff right now. Pretty close already. Looks like we're getting a small head start. Or not. And we're airborne, officially. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tilt slightly. You can see the RCS thrusters on there, by the way. If you press K, you can activate them. And there's the special act group maps for the small engines. Which are keeping us afloat right now. Which is pretty neat. Just be sure to have SAS enabled. And then you can merrily float along in the crater. And now we're slowly heading towards land, adapting our position so we'll get a stable landing. Can provide some counter burn. Yeah, we might wanna want to hold off on landing there. Instead, we could just skip the crater altogether. We're going to have to do some slowing down later now though, but at least we won't have to deal with that crater anymore. That's a plus in my books. Those craters can really mess your day up. So yeah, while you're flying, you may want to do some barrel rolls, stuff like that. Anything to have fun, right? You can even have your Kerbal hop outside and fly, uh, fly around the craft, I don't know. Have fun. Right, so we're going to start using RCS right now. In order to slow ourselves down a bit. 90 meters per second isn't exactly the safest speed for this rover. So yeah, just keep slowly toggling them off and on again to avoid blasting off into space and to avoid death by landing oh, there we go, we're probably going to land another crater unless just fire these up right now there we go, that helps. And then just wait for us to drop down. Try to use RCS to kind of lengthen our flight path just to the edge of that crater. And then we'll land and we'll have flown quite a few kilometers. Let's take a look at fuel. Almost burned through a hundred liquid fuel so far. Which, come to think of it, isn't all that bad, you know? I mean, we flew pretty far. I mean, I, I'm burning on 100% fuel, but why not use less? I mean, it's not impossible. And uh, if you happen to have a good fuel station nearby, which I happen to do, 
you can just dock the rover up, refuel it, and get ready to hop some more craters. I mean, have fun, it's the moon. Less gravity than on Kerbin. Yeah, we'll be just setting down slowly here now. Thanks to the RCS. Going to do a really little burn. Also, pro tip, try and land wheel first. Yeah, there we go. One massive jump. So yeah, this is one of the reasons why I think you should have this rover. It'll really save your Kerbal's life. Right, so let's get back to base. Crash this rover into the dirt. And let's find out all the different action groups and other important things that you might want to know before actually trying it out yourself. Right, so we're back at base. The fuel station is over there. Let's check out the action groups for this baby. So, action group 1 toggles the SAS wheels. Pretty simple. Press 1 to turn them off so you can accelerate safely without having to flip over and stuff like that. Press 1 again to turn it back on again and have a safer driving experience. Action group 2, on the other hand, disables the motor in your front two wheels. So that you basically have a rear wheel drive, in case you want to. And obviously, press 2 to enable those motors again. Action group 3, naturally, disables the motors in the rear wheels. So you have front wheel drive, useful for driving up mountains and stuff like that. So press 3 to turn back that back on again. This is where it gets a little tricky though. If you press 4, you will activate the brakes in your front wheels. I don't know, that can be useful for if you're driving backwards for example and you want to brake safely. And you can press 5 to, to uh, turn on the brakes in your rear wheels. Which is rather useful if you're driving forward at like 20 meters per second, you arrive at your base and you want to safely brake without flipping over and potentially ruining the entire craft. And lastly, but not least, there's Action Group 6, which toggles the four Rocco Max engines. Useful for saving yourself when you're falling down a cliff, or stuff like that. Yeah, basically my driving recommendations for this is pretty simple. Turn the SAS off. Start accelerating until you're driving like 15 meters per second or 20 meters per second, depending on what terrain you're driving on. Then turn the SAS back on. And you can still accelerate, of course, by slowly tapping W. Don't press it down too long, though, or you will slowly flip over. And you don't want that. Believe me, I tried it. Oh, yeah. If you're watching this from YouTube, I have included a link to the spaceport down below, where you can find the latest version of this craft. All four versions are included. Only there's three shown here. Doesn't really matter. If you're watching this from spaceport, I wish you good luck and drive safely. <laughs>